boys and girls, it's Mrs. Weiler here, and I'm getting re ready to read the first two chapters of Because of Winn Dixie, one of my very favorite stories. We're going to read this together, so I'm super excited to do this with you, and we're going to get started here. Chapter one. My name is India Opal Bologna, and last summer my daddy, the preacher, sent me to the store for a bo box of macaroni and cheese, some white rice, and two tomatoes, and I came back with a dog. This is what happened. I walked into the produce section of the Winn-Dixie grocery store to pick out my two tomatoes and I almost bumped right into the store manager. He was standing there all red-faced, screaming and waving his arms around. Who let a dog in here? He kept shouting. Who let a dirty dog in here? Well, at first I didn't see a dog. There was just a lot of vegetables rolling around on the floor, tomatoes and onions and green peppers. And there was what seemed like a whole army of Winn-Dixie employees running around waving their arms just the same the store manager was waving his. And then that dog came running around the corner. He was a big dog and ugly, and he looked like he was having a real good time. His tongue was hanging out and he was wagging his tail and he skidded to a stop and smiled right at me. I had never before in my life seen a dog smile, but this is what he did. He pulled back his lips and showed me all his teeth. Then he wagged his tail so hard that he knocked some oranges off a display and they were rolling everywhere, mixing in with the tomatoes and onions and green peppers. The manager screamed, somebody grab the dog. Well, the dog went running over to the manager, wagging his tail and smiling. He stood up on his hind legs. You could tell that all he wanted to do was get face to face with that manager and thank him for the good time he was having in the produce department. But somehow he ended up knocking the manager over. And that manager must have been having a pretty bad day because lying there on the floor, right in front of everybody, he started to cry. The dog leaned over, real concerned, and licked his face. Please, said the manager, somebody call the pound. Wait a minute, I hollered, that's my dog. Don't call the pound. All the Winn-Dixie employees turned around and looked at me, and I knew I had done something big and maybe stupid too. I couldn't help it. I couldn't let a dog go to the pound. Here, boy, I said. The dog stopped licking the manager's face and put his ears up in the air and looked at me like he was trying to remember where he knew me from. Here, boy, I said again. And then I figured that that dog was probably just like everybody else in the world, that he'd want to get called by a name, only I didn't know his name, so I just said the first thing that came to my head. I said, here, Winn-Dixie. And that dog came trotting over to me just like he'd been doing it his whole life. The manager sat up and gave me a hard stare, like maybe I was making fun of him. It's his name, I said, honest. The manager said, don't you know not to bring a dog into the grocery store? Yes, sir, I told him. He got it by mistake. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Come on, Winn-Dixie, I said to the dog. I started walking and he followed me home, followed me along behind me as if I, out of the produce department and down the cereal aisle and passed all the cashiers out the door. Once we were safe outside, I checked him over real careful and he didn't look very good. He was big but skinny and you could see his ribs. He, he had bald patches all over him, places where he didn't have any fur at all. Mostly, he looked like a big piece of old brown carpet that had been left out in the rain. You're a mess, I told him. I bet you don't belong to anybody. And he smiled at me. He did that thing again where he pulled back his lips and showed me his teeth. He smiled so big that it made him sneeze. It was like he was saying, I know I'm messed, isn't it funny? It's hard not to immediately fall in love with a dog who has a good sense of humor. Come on, I told him, let's see what the preacher has to say about you. And the two of us, me and Winn-Dixie, started walking home. Chapter two. That summer I found Lynn Dixie was also the summer me and the preacher moved to Naomi, Florida, so we could be the new preacher, he could be the new preacher at the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. My daddy is a good preacher and a nice man, but sometimes it's hard for me to think about him as a daddy because he spends so much time preaching or thinking about preaching or getting ready to preach. And so in my mind, I think of him as the preacher. Before I was born, he was a missionary in India, and that is how I got my first name. But he calls it with my second name, Opal because he says that's my mother's name and he loved her a lot. Anyway, while me and Lynn Dixie walked home, I told him how I got my name and I told him how I had just moved to Naomi. I also told him about the preacher and how good he was, how, what a good man he was, even if he was too distracted with sermons and prayers and suffering people to go grocery shopping. But you know what, I told Lynn Dixie, you are a suffering dog, so maybe he will take to you right away. Maybe he'll let me keep you. When Dixie looked up at me and wagged his tail, he was kind of limping like something was wrong with one of his legs, and I have to admit, he stunk bad. He was an ugly dog, but already I loved him with all of my heart. When we got to the Friendly Corners trailer park, I told Win Dixie that he had to behave 
and be quiet because this was an adult, all adult trailer park. And the only reason I got to live in the year was because the preacher was a preacher and I was a good, quiet kid. I was what the friendly corners trail park manager, Mr. Alford called an exception. And I told Lynn Dixie, he had to act like an exception too, specifically. I told him not to pick any fights with Mr. Alford's cat or Mrs. Detweiler's little yappy Yorkie dog, Samuel. Lynn Dixie looked at me while I was telling him everything and I swear he understood. Sit, I told him when we got to my trailer. He sat right down, he has such good manners. Stay here, I said, I'll be right back. The preacher was sitting in the living room working at the little fold out table. He had pa papers spread all around him and rubbing his nose, which always means he's thinking hard. Daddy, I said, hmm, he said. Daddy, do you know how you're always telling me that we should help those less fortunate than us? Mm-hmm, he said. He rubbed his nose and looked all around. Well, I said, I found a less fortunate at the grocery store. Is that right, he said. Yes, sir, I told him. I stared at the preacher really hard. Sometimes he reminded me of a turtle hiding inside its shell, in there thinking about things and not ever sticking his head out into the world. Daddy, I was wondering, could that less fortunate, could he stay with us a while? Finally, the preacher looked at me. Opal, he said, what are you talking about? I found a dog, I told him, and I want to keep him. No dogs, the preacher said. We've talked about it before, you don't need a dog. I know what I said, I know I don't need a dog, but this dog needs me, look. I went to the trailer door and I hollered, Win Dixie. When Dixie's ears shot up in the air and he grinned and he sneezed and he came limping up the steps into the trailer park and put his head right in the preacher's lap, right on top of the pile of papers. The preacher looked at Win Dixie. He looked at his ribs and his matted up fur and the places where he was bald. The preacher's nose wrinkled up. Like I said, the dog smelled pretty bad. When Dixie looked up at the preacher, he pulled his lips and showed the preacher all of his crooked yellow teeth and wagged his tail and knocked some of the preacher's papers right off. And he sneezed and some more papers fluttered to the floor. What did you call this dog, he asked? Win Dixie, I whispered. I was afraid to say anything too loud. I could see that Win Dixie was having a good effect on the preacher. He was making him poke his head out of that shell. Well, said the preacher, he's a stray if I've ever seen one. He put down his pencil and scratched Win Dixie behind his ears. And a less fortunate too, that's for sure. Are you looking for the home? The preacher said real soft. Win Dixie wagged his tail. Well, the preacher said, I guess you found one.